All right, and welcome to this week's Yawa, where we cover some cool details and info about what's going on here at Standing Stone, as well as do our best to answer a few of your questions. Now, today, we have some really, really cool news, and this is something that everybody is probably having some anticipation around. A name. Like 433 people, I think, are anticipating a name because that's how many comments we got on that video, which has only what? been up a few days, which is awesome. 433 comments is insane. Wait, 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 wait. Where's my coffee? <laughs> I, I literally thought you had already grabbed that. Yeah. Got it. So... Thank you to everybody that watched our video on help us come up with a name for our new Black Lab puppy. There were a ton of you that watched and a ton of you that commented. So we appreciate that. And I do want to say some of y'all are freaking hilarious. Some of y'all are awesome. And some of y'all need to work a little bit on your dog naming skills. <laughs> but... We're not going to read through all of the dog names because, like I said, there's like 433 comments, but there were some good ones that I just have to share in case you read. didn't read through all 433 yeah, and you missed some. Through. This one says, from Carlos Lopez, Gotham, when he needs help in the middle of the night, your wife can say, Gotham needs you. <laughs> always be yourself. Unless you can be Batman, then always be Batman. Ah, if only I could be Batman. So the next one was from Pepper Palooza. Okay. Our dog's name is Whiskey. I dig the, the YouTube name. Yeah. Our dog's name is Whiskey. Feel free to use it. Or Bullet, spelled B-U-L-L-E-I-T. Mm, like you the can, bourbon. Yeah, you can use the traditional spelling. Or if you don't want to name him after the bourbon, you can use the traditional spelling. Um, you could always name him after the grandfather of bourbon industry, Booker. Booker. Then when he does something bad, you could use his full name. Booker, no. Booker, no. Booker, no. Uh, another person, Michael Loomis, said whiskey or bourbon. I, I mm. was definitely feeling a theme here. We got a lot of bourbon requests. It was uh, one that popped up pretty regularly. Yeah, I wonder um, if that's because people are just watching you have bourbon on all these <laughs> yawas. I, and to be completely honest, it did cross my mind even before y'all started suggesting things, but Kat kind of ixnayed that one real fast. She's like, can you imagine being out there yelling, bourbon? And what do you shorten it to, burb? No. I'm sorry. Burb. Yeah, that's pretty bad. So another person had said Danica, Noel, Delos Race, mm -hmm. Weller, Jameson, or Hayden. Ooh. So like I said, there was definitely- Weller. Weller would be a good one. That wouldn't have been a bad one. Yeah, Weller, that, Weller, Weller. That's Weller, not Weller, bad. Weller. That might be a, we might steal that one for a, a short hair puppy name sometime. I like it. Um, somebody said, Cassandra Harvey said, Bear actually spent a lot of my childhood in central New York, about an hour away from where you guys- this guy came from. Oh, really? Lots of black bears in that country, and you see lots of babies. He looks just like a little black bear. And he <laughs> sounds like one, too, in the video at three minutes and 50 seconds. Wait, laugh out wait, loud. Wait, 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 wait. Super There's cute. There's lots of black bears in central New York? Well, we didn't see any, and I'm okay with that. I want to see I suppose a black, bear. black bears, though, aren't like grizzly bears, so they're not quite as scary. They only weigh like what three four hundred pounds instead of a thousand. There's a that's a big difference. It is, but I still think three four hundred pounds would would beep me up. Let's yeah, go with that. Yeah. I'll save you the time, Mister Editor. Uh, Steve C is definitely a Star Wars fan. Okay, Vader, Ooh, the Vader. supreme commander of the Imperial forces, <sighs> Dark Lord of the Sith. <sighs> Luke. This one was interesting. I am your father. Christopher <laughs> Haining. It's horrible. How about asterisk, meaning little black star? Very literal, and I liked it. I thought that was really cool. I think it's very fitting. Looking forward to more videos. And I actually might steal that name for an upcoming short hair puppy. It sounds like a, a girl a, name. A I like it for a female, female name. name. Yeah, so yeah. I really like it. It's and, hard to say, though. And you probably don't want to shorten it to... <laughs> <laughs> Okay. But I like the name. We might come up with a way to use it. So uh, um, I had a phone call from a little old lady this morning. And I say little old lady because that's what she described herself as. Um, she said, I'm just a little old lady and I struggle with technology. Uh, but she said, I have a name for you. And she wanted to, she said, what, what 
was it now? It'll come to me. It was some type of uh, of rock. It was something type of rock. Flint? Mm, no. Darn it. Shale? Nah. It was good, too. That's, unfortunately, if she could have typed it out and commented on the God, video. I would say and, my broken memory wouldn't be here. Um, well, if you come up with it, throw it out there. Yep. I'll this one was here. really funny, though, from It's Just Peaches. Lone ducks, duck, duck, goose, and call him <laughs> goose. <laughs> That's funny. I thought that was really funny. Uh, Taggart Jenkins said, yo, name him Jep. Jep the duck, duck dog, just like you guys have Cat the dog trainer and the guy with the pink gun. I like that. I like that. This was a really cool idea and name as well, because Andrew Dunlap said, it's a pup out of Memphis, so name him Nashville. Nash for short. And that is a great uh, idea, but his mom actually wasn't Memphis. His mom was Sam, um, but it's a really cool idea and play off of how to use mom and puppy name all in one. Uh, this one also uh, was a Batman theme, so I thought I'd throw it out there for you. Okay. Mr. Batman from K. Grant McCown. Lone Duck Outfitters Dark Knight and call him Knight. Goodness, I'm, I feel so bad. I cannot remember what that name was. Uh, and then you're put on the spot. Yeah. These were really cute too. Paul Ludwilowski. Generally don't recommend dog names for people, but I'm going to make an exception. Two okay. suggestions. One bourbon, which uh-huh. we already talked about why we couldn't do that. Uh-huh. And you have thunder. How about a lightning? So that was another good idea. Uh, yeah, that's a fantastic idea. This one, which itty bitty mama name suggestion rooster. If you're a John Wayne fan, you'll know, which Rooster Cogburn, I know, I love John Wayne. Uh, But there is one problem with calling your dog's name Rooster while you're out in the field hunting for pheasants. Yeah, especially when you're hunting for pheasants. You start hollering Rooster and then everybody starts looking around going, where Where to shoot. Yeah. It gets gets annoying after a while. Um, We actually had a dog, Rooster, which it's it's a cool sounding name, uh, but it's it's got those hidden things underneath that you go, "Mm, maybe not the greatest. I hadn't thought about that ahead of time. Uh, Exactly. Uh, Sarah Lucas said Angus because he looks like a mini black Angus cow. mm. I also really like the name Bourbon. (laughs) Yes, Bourbon. So Bourbon was a huge name. That was that was my that was my original suggestion. It just um, Burb for short. Yeah. It just doesn't have a good ring to it. It does not. Burb. I think maybe, maybe better yet, for any of you watch, uh, you guys know that I enjoy uh, pigeons from a, a hobby standpoint. Maybe I could name a pigeon bourbon. That would be a yeah. fantastic name. I can totally see a pigeon out there pecking, pecking grain. Burb, burb, burb. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Like, that makes know. more sense You to don't me. really have to talk to them, so you don't really need to even shorten it. You know, it's just like bourbon. Look, that's my pigeon bourbon. Why do you call him bourbon? Uh, it's because it's what I decided to refer to him as. So I could say <laughs> something other than band number 6757 or whatever his number is. So we digress, though. Those were some really great name suggestions. I definitely couldn't read through them all here in our short amount of time that we have with you guys. But thank you for following along with our videos. And thank you for commenting your suggestions. So if you don't subscribe, hit that subscribe button, turn on notifications and follow along because this is how you get to find out what his new name is. Yeah. The uh, other side of it is with his series, we're going to be trying to fill in the gaps. We talked a little bit about this, but we will be showing real training sessions, but more in a sense of kind of those in-between steps that a lot of people ask about. Like, yeah, I get, he knows how to sit. We've watched five series now that you've put together and the dogs pretty much all learn that the same and, and kennel and recall and all of these things get taught the same, but I'm struggling with when my clicker training session goes really well here, but they don't listen the rest of the day. So we can, um, we're going to try and incorporate more of those type of training scenarios into his series, as well as into Thunder's series, as well as into Zephyr's series. We have lots of puppies with completely different personalities. So we have the opportunity to incorporate multiple different facets there. And then on top of all of that, when we get into the advanced stuff, and guys, I'm talking, this is like 10, 12 months down the road. You guys have to be really committed 
Yeah. So subscribe, turn on notifications. <laughs> <laughs> 10, 10, 12 months from now, we will be moving into more of his advanced work. And when we get to that point, I'm going to be getting a fair amount of help from uh, Bob at Lone Duck there. And I will do a majority of that through watching videos on his channel. He's going to be putting together training videos showing how he teaches these things from and, and taking a very similar approach to what we do with a, uh, you know, almost one shot teaching video where you've got a dog that doesn't know how to do something and we're going to show them. So you get to see the failures, you get to see the successes, and you get to see that um, light bulb or that light switch click in that dog's head and and see them kind of turn those wheels in the direction of doing what they're supposed to. And that'll be a big part of what I'm using and we'll refer you to the videos as well as show you step by step when we get to that advanced section, step by step what we're doing to uh, help them progress. Yeah, because we haven't done the advanced stuff in a series yet. So you need all the parts and all the pieces for that part. And definitely watching videos that are set up similarly to how we're doing videos so that we can actually learn something. That's the big thing. Watching a finished dog just roll through the steps, you don't necessarily learn how to work through when they struggle. And believe me, we're going to be those newbies that are learning how to work through some of these drills and some of these things. And having that resource is going to be a really good benefit. Absolutely. So are we announcing little black lab male puppy's name today or are we waiting for his first or his next, his next video? My plan was to announce it today, but then you were all like, eh, we're going to, you got no, to tag along to the next video. No, we need to announce it today. That was my plan. Oh, well, we're on the same page. <laughs> okay, so uh, we read through all the names. We got a lot of great suggestions, some funny ones, some good suggestions that were maybe not quite so good for the dog name category of things. Um, and I think we have decided to name him Clutch. Fido. Oh, <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> that was good, honey. <laughs> Um, Clutch, we're going to name the little guy Clutch, and I do not have a registered name yet. We'll come up with that very soon. Uh, if you guys want to throw some suggestions down there, it has to start Lone Ducks, and then something that kind of has to do or does not have to do with Clutch. And we don't mean like the little lady purse Clutch. Well, I guess it has multiple meanings. <laughs> we're talking like Clutch in the moment he came through, or... Whatever, you know, yeah. just definition. And it's easy to yell, basically. That's my go-to. <laughs> and you can be forceful with it. Mm -hmm. Great. So now that we've talked about our little lab, lab puppy, I want to answer a question about a lab puppy. I like it. Let's go. From Chris Keegan, which this is also really cool because <clears throat> his dog's in for training right now. Nice. I have a pointing lab currently in professional training who you have met, laugh out loud. She will be going through formal woe training. So my question is, hunting groups generally consist of guys with flushing labs. Mm -hmm. Some have some formal training. Some are trained by the average Joe. Is my pointing lab going to learn bad habits or flushing habits and lose her steadiness by hunting with these other dogs? Should I do my own thing or stick to hunting with other pointers only? This is a really good question. and It it's, is a good question. And it's something that we, we like to talk about, not only for your pointing lab, which she's doing a great job, but also with young pointing dogs, their first season. It puts a lot of pressure on those puppies' steadiness if they get to watch other dogs flushing the birds that they just found and are pointing in front of them. Can it be done? Sure. But we usually wait until the puppies are older, have had a season of birds to really solidify that steadiness before we start asking them to work with flushers as well. Yes. So uh, ultimately, do you need to do your own thing? Uh, it might be beneficial in the beginning, especially until you feel comfortable. But then at the same time, you're going to need to be able to see what's going on so that you can help handle. Can she learn how to do it? Absolutely. And the other side of it too is... Um, you could definitely hunt her with other pointers because they're going to be exhibiting the steadiness and the woeing and the behaviors that, you know, Riley's going to be having. So definitely working with pointers, a-okay. Working with flushing dogs, whether they're labs or little cockers or any other flushing breeds is going to definitely be more difficult and probably something that we recommend either later in this season 
or her next season after she's been able to really hone in on those steadiness behaviors that we've been working really hard on. Absolutely. Absolutely. So even, uh, long story short, whether you have your pointing lab or any pointing dog to begin with, it's going to be difficult in that first season and you need to be prepared for that. Really good question. Next question from Lacey Burnett. What size of crate do you recommend for a new GSP puppy? We're getting an eight-week-old GSP in September, but this will be the first time we're getting a large breed dog as a puppy, so any advice would be very helpful. This is the part that I really like. Should we look for one he can grow into, or should we be getting multiple until he's full grown? Love your channel, and thanks for all the great content. So thank you for following along. Uh, thanks for the great question. And this is one that we've talked about a little bit in some of our other videos. But it's a good one to touch on. I mean, it's something yeah. that a lot of people have questions about. And a lot of people make the wrong decision in trying to figure it out on their own. Yeah, and it would seem, well, let's just get a crate that they're going to grow into. That makes the most sense. It is the logical answer for we can buy one, buy the good one, buy the right size, one and done, and it's a, the higher dollar rock and roll for life dog crate. But we have to think of these puppies as developing in stages. So we're going to really struggle with crate training and potty training in the beginning. That's going to be one of your main struggles is working on house training, crate training, potty training. And if your puppy has a giant crate, they're going to feel more comfortable having an accident in one end of the crate and hanging out and playing and chewing on bones and whatever on the other end of the crate. So getting a smaller crate that fits your eight week old puppy till about 12 weeks old. And then if you want, even, uh, especially if you're still maybe having some potty accidents here or there next size up for, 12 weeks, 16 weeks to maybe six months. And then the next size up that is going to be like the life size crate. Yeah. That's what we usually go is small, medium, full size. Yes. For our puppy stages. Um, you don't have to get the super expensive crate. That's going to be, you know, lifetime when your puppy's only going to be in it until they're 12 weeks old for a month. There's no need to invest that kind of money in a crate that's going to only be necessary for a month, maybe a little over that, because they're going to outgrow them. And most people don't raise puppies constantly, consistently, crazily like we do. So they aren't going to need that crate again for a while. Um, and then once you get to the size that they're going to need as an adult, that's when you invest in a really well-made, strong, sturdy, crash-tested even crate. Um, I know Lucky Duck crates are really great crates as far as crash test ratings. Um, and that would be a crate and a size that we'd recommend when your dog is more of that full-grown stage. Starting out, I usually throw out the dimensions of about 22 inches deep by about 16 to 18 inches tall, 16, 18 inches wide. So it's not very big, just enough room for your puppy to go in, turn around, lay down. You think the average eight week old puppy is going to be somewhere in the vicinity of 10 pounds. Yes. And then once they again, outgrow that a little bit bigger, um, still so that they can stand up and turn around and lay down comfortably. Um, but not so much room that they again can have accidents easily in that space. Yep. And then the medium, I mean, it's typically considered a medium crate, but you're going to be in that 20 to 30 pound range. So a lot of those crates are going to have a, a weight type of restriction or recommendation, if you will, on the label, that's going to give you a ballpark to that 10 to 15 pound range. And then a 30 ish pound range. That's going to be typically your medium size, give or take. Yes. And since you're going to be getting a puppy very soon in September, and you're already asking the questions about how to start out properly, definitely check out some of our playlists as well as we just put out very recently tips and tricks for crate training because that's going to be huge for your puppy's first you know day home even first weeks home start watching those and then fill in on one of our puppy gsp series we've got rogues we've got quest series we've got a really old series with mac but all of those things are great things that you can follow along with with your new puppy when they come home absolutely guys we're going to take a short break and we'll be back with you in just a minute 